Hi, welcome to the Midnight Quilt Show. It's the best time of the night because I have my stretchy pants on, I've got my fabric, and I'm getting ready to go round and round and round for a medallion quilt I'm making for my mom just because. So let's get started. So the fabric I'm using tonight is the Dutch Gardens Fabric Collection. And what I love about this is it has these beautiful small floral prints and some fun blenders that are gonna go with it. And it's gonna look gorgeous in the quilt. And I'm really excited about these beautiful florals right here that are gonna be featured in the borders. So they're not gonna get cut up and lost in the quilt. And then who doesn't love a stripy binding? That almost makes binding a fun part of the quilting process. As you can tell, it's not my favorite. Now, the reason I really picked out these colors is because it's reminiscent of a quilt that I made a long time ago. You see, I didn't just pick this because I'm a great daughter to my mom. I picked this fabric because I feel really guilty. I may have started a quilt over 16 years ago for her. She doesn't know this, although she's gonna find out soon, isn't she? I'm gonna have to call her. So it was my second quilt ever made, okay? Lemoyne Star, not a good choice, obviously, especially when you have all those points coming together in the center, but it didn't look too bad, so I pieced it and then I hand quilted it. That's right, before I was a machine quilter, I was actually a hand quilter. So when I got done with this quilt, after the hours and hours and hours of time, I thought, I don't know if I can give it away. So I folded it up and never gave it to my mom. And to this day, she doesn't know that that's what this quilt was for. So at the time I thought, she's not a quilter. I don't know if she'll love it as much as I love it. But now that I've had kids, and I realized what she had to go through to raise me, I realized she deserves probably 20 of those quilts. So this is my way of saying, love you mom, sorry, I thought you weren't good enough for a quilt, but I love you. So I'm gonna start out with the borders because so much of this quilt is borders. And what I'm doing is taking my fabric and I'm gonna just fold it over a little bit so that I have enough room to work with it. If I had a much bigger mat, I could lay it all out, but I'm just gonna work with what I have. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the fold is even with one of the lines on the mat. And that's gonna give me my straight kind of edge to work with. Then I'm gonna make sure that the fold on the bottom is also even with a line. And that's just gonna help make sure that I don't cut it and get those weird kind of wonky type borders. So if both of those sides are parallel, I should, in theory, be able to cut and get a nice straight border. So let's see what happens. Gonna trim up this edge real quick. And these are teeny tiny borders, so they're only an inch and a half. Now this is actually a pattern designed by Tiffany Hayes, and when I saw it, I could not wait to get working on it. So I'm gonna do the same with this fabric. They're just a little bit wider cuts. Okay, I've got my borders. Now it's time to put them around the center of the quilt. So here's the center of the quilt. And when I started, I had my square here, added the sides, but now I need to turn it around so that I can add the pieces around the outside of it. So guilt is a powerful motivator when it comes to sewing. I've already got this whole thing done. Just need to put it together and then start adding all the borders to the quilt. So this is actually the center of the quilt. So in some retrospect, I'm basically practically done with this quilt, but actually I'm not because there's a lot more borders going all around the sides. So I better get right to it. So the borders are already cut to the size they need to be, which is really nice. It's important that I sew the borders on correctly because if I make a mistake on the first one and make it too big, it's gonna keep compounding and compounding. And next thing you know, I have a lot of friendly borders, you know, the ones that wave to you when you walk in the room. So what I like to do with these borders, especially as they get longer, is just find the center and match up the center of the border to the center of the side that I'm sewing it on. And I'm just gonna clip it on here. Now, a better piecer than I might go ahead and pin it carefully all down, but I don't like to pin a whole lot. So as long as I have that center, that's a good kind of stop gap, a good measure to let me know how I'm doing. And I'm just gonna sew it on. And as I approach that middle point, I'm gonna know that that means that my border's still on the way that it should be. Cause it's really easy to pull those borders too tight and I don't wanna get, you know, overzealous and make it not fit. And I think you can sew over these clips, but I'm gonna go and just remove that one. And then once I get to the middle part, I line up the end here and then just make sure that that's still, that it's still lining up like it should be. Again, I kind of feel like I shouldn't be showing you this, but this is really how I piece. I don't, I don't like to take time to pin. And woohoo, that's one border out of, I think there's like 59 borders on here. 
I don't know, that's just what it looks like on the picture. So first border is on, and what I'm doing is going top border, bottom border, and then putting on the sides. So I'm gonna rotate this thing around and put on the next one that needs to go. Find in the center, feeling very centered, very, you know, border-like, zen-ish something, lining it up to the center of my thing that I'm sewing it on. And I can tell this is a center because that's where the piecing shows me it is. If it was another long border, I'm gonna have to actually fold the quilt and find that. But since the piecing is there to act as a guide, I'm gonna use that to my advantage. I feel like I read that in a fortune cookie one time. Let the piecing be your guide. Did you get it? It was a joke. Oh, you got it, it just wasn't funny. Okay. Now one question that I saw in the comments of the YouTube videos Yes, that's right, I like to read the comments. I call it research and development. It is not because I am addicted to social media. One thing that people ask is why do I use my walking foot all the time? I actually love sewing with my walking foot. I have a quarter inch line down here on my machine that I use as a guide, but especially with these borders, it helps pull those two borders through at the same time so that I don't get any borders that are getting stretched or or not applied the way they should. That is absolutely the reason I do it. It is not because I'm too lazy to switch out my feet. Getting towards the center. This is always where it's like, whew, I'm halfway there. Yay, little mini celebration. Not as important right now, because this is a small border, but when these borders get longer, I might have to have more road stops along the way. And then I'm just going to take a moment, make sure those bottom points are lined up, kind of give it a nice tug, and continue on. This feels almost like deja vu. Seems like I could remember making that first quilt with the blue and the yellow and sitting here late at night. Things are so much different now than they were back then, but it's kind of funny how it all comes around full circle, right? It's like a kumbaya moment. Mm -hmm. Kumbaya, not doing that. So if you get to the end and you've been, you know, messing around and it doesn't line up quite right, I can't believe I'm gonna tell you that I do this. This is not what you should do, but this is what I do. I'll give that top border just a little bit of a stretch a little bit of a pull to try to line it up. In technical terms, that's a stretchy stretch. And then line it up and sew. All right, top and bottom are done, just to put on the sides and continue going round and around and around. First two borders, check and check, they're done. And I'm ready for my first pieced border, which let's see, let's get this weighted down. Now I contemplated leaving this out because I thought, oh, it's a lot of work for a border. But then I thought, my mom did give birth to me, so there's that. So I'll leave it in. I've got borders everywhere. And the next one's gonna go just like this. So even though it's pieced with blocks, it definitely is still a border and everything else is still gonna apply. I'm gonna find the center. I might throw a few more pins in there to keep it on track, but now all I have to do is just sew it. Top, bottom, side, and side. Just gonna find the center of that border, which is actually pretty easy because it's already pieced. So just go to the middle of that and I'm gonna line it up with the center of my quilt, which is gonna be right about this point, right? Because there's still the center. I'm just gonna use the visual cues. It's late at night and I've got to get this done. I don't know why I'm feeling guilty about this, but in my defense, my mom wasn't a quilter at the time when I was making that quilt. Remember, I learned how to quilt from my husband's grandpa, so I was a quilter and she wasn't, and I wasn't sure that she would appreciate how much time I'd spent on it, and I didn't know if she could keep it safe and make it feel loved. But now that I say that, that really is no defense because she did keep me alive all these years. I am such a horrible daughter. I'm gonna lose my status as her favorite child. A status that I've held, even though I have three sisters. Take that, Heidi. And look at this, they're lining up perfectly. I don't have to do the stretchy stretch on this one. All right, top and bottom done, just time to put on the sides. And I love to always have the smallest piece on top. That way if I need to adjust it, I could easily get to it. If I had it the other way around, I'm gonna have to dig underneath the quilt to reach it. So that's another thing that I think makes it a little bit easier, a little bit more bearable. So I went three rounds with this quilt, attached my three borders, and I still have to do that a lot more. So let's get to it. So I've got those three borders on. You think I'd be done. You think I'd be finished, but no, no, there's always more. Now I need to put on the rest of the borders. That's right, there's still three more to go. So the next round of borders is a pieced border. And if you can see, it's kind of fun. 
even if it is pieced and takes longer. It has these kind of squares on point, which are gonna be really fun when I get to the quilting part. You can see here, I'm waiting on just a few more pieces, which I have right here, and I'm gonna show you what it's gonna kind of look like when it's all ready. Paste borders are hilarious, because it's like not only do you have to sew this around all four sides, you have to take all these little pieces, sew it into a long line, and then sew it all the way around. It's kind of like somebody's idea of a funny trick. So, all that's left to do is to piece this border and sew it on, add the inner, more narrow border, and then the final outer, wider border, and I'm done. Oh, it's finished. I feel like I've went nine rounds with this quilt but it's finally done. And while I may have started it out of guilt, when she sees this quilt and all these borders, she's gonna know exactly how much I love her. Now I'm gonna take the backing, which I've actually picked out this beautiful floral. Drink to the side. Don't spill. Okay. This lovely floral backing, because what it's gonna do is hide any imperfections in my machine quilting. So if it doesn't turn out okay, it's gonna look fine. I'm gonna take that, layer it with my batting, and get to the machine quilting, my absolute favorite part. The quilt sandwich is basted, ready to go. I am ready to start quilting, but there's one critical choice I have to make before I can actually get started, and that's thread color. There are several great color options that will work, but I've narrowed it down to two, yellow and blue. I know it's kind of out there, isn't it, since the quilt is yellow and blue. I mean, I could do a cream color, I could do a light gray, that would all work, but these two, are my final contenders. They're the ones that have made it this far in the selection process. And honestly, I think they both would be fantastic. Now, if this were a customer quilt, I probably would go with the yellow, since it's gonna tend to blend in with the yellow and the white a little bit more. But since I'm quilting this quilt for my mom, and because she loves my quilting, at least that's what I tell myself every night, I'm gonna use the blue so it shows up just a little bit more. So if you're making this quilt along with me, you can pick whichever one you like. I'm gonna start quilting in these borders right here. And what's great about quilting on my sewing machine is I can pick where I wanna start. And I wanna start right here. So in the yellow border, I'm gonna quilt a bracket shape and it's perfect for these narrow, thinner borders. Now, if you have any trouble with that shape, you can download the quilting diagrams. The information is in the description box and you can trace along and get more comfortable with that shape. But I'm gonna quilt it repeatedly throughout the border, trying to keep it as consistent as possible. Then once I decide I'm ready to transfer over into the next border or I've run out of room or I'm just tired of quilting that shape, I'm gonna stop when I'm touching the seam to the next border. This is kind of like my, my little transfer, my little cheat path into that area. And so from there, I'm gonna go right into that blue border and quilt a loopy design, a line that kind of loops back and forth, filling in the space as much as possible. Another great design for those thinner borders. Now that I'm at the same point that I started the first border, I could just keep on going or I could just transition into this piece border right here, which I think I'll go ahead and do since I happen to be right here. In the blue portion of this piece block, I'm going to my go-to design, I guess you could call it, the swirls. But I'm really just using that as a way to work over to my next skinny border so I can go back to my loopy lines because I'm feeling a little loopy tonight. Now in the next border that I'm working in, it's a little bit wider, so I need something a little bit bigger that's gonna fill in the space. So my brackets and my loopy designs aren't really gonna work in this one. So what I'm going to do is a serpentine line. I'm gonna travel up along the seam just a bit and make an elongated S that reaches to the other side. Once I get there, I'm just gonna travel up a little bit more and echo my way back down. Once I have that first shape quilted, all I have to do is echo, echo, and echo. And what I love about it is it's really quick to quilt, even in these slightly wider borders. Now, if you're not loving these designs as border designs for your quilts, there's a really great class on Craftsy that talks about borders and backgrounds. It talks about how to work your way around corners and some different options for the borders of your quilts. And I hear the instructor, which is me, is actually kind of funny. So check it out if you'd like. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and continue quilting this quilt. And after I'm done, I'll show you all the different things I did in all these different borders. So, I finished quilting the whole quilt, including all nine borders. Don't you love how fast that came together? I'm such a quick quilter. Now, I have my knitting needle here, the only knitting needle that I own, but I'm gonna use this to show you my path on the quilt. Because sometimes it's not knowing what to quilt, it's just knowing how to get where you're going. When I look at the quilt, I'm thinking of it in a section like this. Basically, I don't wanna have to quilt a whole border all the way around and come back. I wanna be able to handle this whole area while I'm here. So what I'm gonna do is use that quilting to transfer into the next borders. Quilting the bracket shape in this narrow border 
It allows me to work my way through. Then, once I run out of room or I'm just tired of quilting that design, I can use the quilting to transfer into the next border. So quilt right on over and then go into my loopy design, working back the direction that I just came. And what that's allowing me to do is work up and down, filling in the space that I'm at. Then, when I'm ready to transfer into the next border, I can just go right into that and start quilting my swirls or whatever design I've picked for this piece border. But just like I've done already, work my way back up and then back down in the next border and continuing on back and forth. Then, when I'm ready, I can continue on down and quilt my next chunk just hooking them together so that they form one continuous looking kind of line. So if that seems kind of confusing, don't worry. I have the quilting diagrams that you can download that will make it make more sense for this quilt or any quilt that you're working with with multiple borders. And I also have an easier all over option just in case you're thinking that's way too much to think about at this time of night. So tonight I've been doing a little guilty quilting as a way to make up to my mom for not giving a quilt to her so many years ago but I've made it nine rounds with this quilt, all nine borders, quilted it with designs that were really easy to quilt efficiently, but still make it look interesting, and now the result is beautiful. In fact, I love it so much, I may not be able to give it to her. I might just have to keep it for myself. Do you think she would like this yellow and blue quilt? I'm just kidding, I'm gonna give it to her. She did give birth to me after all. But come on, that can't be the worst quilty confession, right? Surely you've got a good one. Leave it in the comments below and I can't wait to pick my favorite. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe because you never know what's gonna happen on the Midnight Quilt Show. Have a great night.